everybody. I know you are wondering what's going on. Well, I am so excited. I am blessed and highly favored. I'm happy. And this is the start of my variety channel. Yes, I finally did my first video. Um, so today's video is inspired by my grandson. I have a grandson and I am better known as Nana. And his name is Cameron. He's eight years old. We call him Cam for short. And he loves Cam Newton too. Um, so we are going to get started. He wanted me to make chocolate chip cookies. Now there's a recipe that I have that is, whew, oh my goodness, it is delicious. Um, it is a recipe that I have kind of tweaked and made my own. The original recipe is the Double Tree chocolate chip cookies, you know, the hotel Double Tree. Well, I've been to the Double Tree many a times. I've had their cookies many of times, but I tend to think mine are the much better Double Tree chocolate chip cookies. If you make these, you be the judge. You let me know down in the comments if you really, really like them, okay? So I'm going to get started. And um, now Cameron was supposed to be in the video with me. However, he got a little tired and he is a little cranky right now. So he's gonna sit this one out maybe next time. But he is going to be my co-host from time to time. So you all make sure though, you subscribe to the channel because I have some great recipes that I'm gonna share. I have some great crafts that I would like to share. So, and i tell you what, I, something that I, I was really thinking about, if you have a recipe that's one of your favorites and you would like me to do the recipe on the show, send it to me. I'll have my email information below and maybe once a month or so, I'll choose a recipe uh, from one of my subscribers and we will go from there. All right, well you sit back and get ready because it's getting ready to start. Okay, let's get started. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to sift my flour. Now I'll have all of the ingredients along with the measurements down below, so you don't have to worry about that, but you can just follow along if you want to. Now, yes, I still have my old grinder. I love this thing, it does a great job. I won't even buy a new one unless this one will break eventually. Um, but so far I am going to go ahead and grind in or sift in uh, two and a half cups of flour. And we're gonna get that all the way down. Make sure you get all the little crumbs that are down in there, okay? All those little crumbs, okay? That's about all of the flour. And then we're going to whisk in a half a cup of oats. Now the re original recipe calls for the old fashioned oats, like the ones you have to cook for a while. I use quick oats and I use it every time. It has never failed me. So now I take my grinder. What you want to do is to grind your oats into a powdery form. Okay, so I put my half a cup of oats in a little cup like this, my little coffee cup. I like it because the diameter of the cup works really well with my grinder. Now I've actually already grinded them, but um, just for purposes of the video, I'm gonna show you how this works. These are already grinded actually. I'm just gonna just, uh, get a little bit more. of it settles at the bottom so I'm just grinding that up and this is actually a powder form now you see that it's, it's just straight powder and you can add that into your flour mixture okay now the next step would be to add in a teaspoon of baking soda a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and I have that right here. I've already pre-measured all three of those. So I'm just gonna add that to my flour mixture. 
And at this point, you want to go ahead and make sure that you whisk it in or stir it. Whisk it or stir it, it doesn't matter. Either one will do the job. Okay, and that's pretty good. As you see, we have everything already mixed up, mixed together, mixed in well. There are no clumps. If you see clumps, that means you need to sift again, okay? All right, now I'm gonna set that to the side for now. So the next thing I want to do is to add two sticks of melted butter. I have my butter in the microwave already. It's already soft, but I'm gonna go ahead and let it melt. Um, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to add in three quarter cup of brown sugar and three quarter cup of granulated white sugar. That's three quarter cup each, okay? I've already pre-measured it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that into my bowl, my mixing bowl. All right. And now that I have that added into my mixing bowl, I am going to add my butter. I'm gonna pour that right in. And I wanna get every little bit of this gooey, ooey butter out of here. So I'm gonna scrape that down. All right, and so what I'm gonna do now is just mix this until it is mixed well. Now, I usually work with my paddle, and for some reason my paddle has come up missing. So I have purchased two separate paddles since then, and neither one of them will fit my machine, so I don't know what's going on. So right now I'm gonna use my whisk but it doesn't change anything. The cookies, I've made this many times with my whisk and everything comes out just great. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this up. It's gonna be a little noisy for a second. Okay, we have that all mixed up and I'm just going to make sure that I scrape down my sides so that everything is mixed well. Yep, that's looking really, really good. Okay, so now what you want to do is to add in uh, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla a uh, half a teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon of lemon juice. And I have both of those together in my little ramekin here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in. I didn't think it was necessary to get two different dishes for that. They're all going to the same place, right? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and mix that in. And I'm also gonna grab two eggs. I literally just put them in the refrigerator but forgot to take two out. Now, your eggs should always be at room temperature, and these are, that I literally just put them in a refrigerator. I just forgot to hold two back. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack these in separate containers because I want to make sure that I do not have any shells. So this first egg is looking pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and get the second egg cracked. That's looking good as well. All right, and we're going to go ahead and get this all mixed up. This is looking really good. Let me show you what the batter should look like at this point. Right now, it's all mixed. It's all combined. It almost looks like a... Uh, a lighter caramel. It has a thick consistency. Okay, and that's what we should be looking for right now. It should be nice and smooth, no lumps in it at all. Make sure your butter is not solidified. Make sure that butter is nice and melted because you don't want it to be clumpy, okay? 
So now that we've mixed our liquid ingredients, we are going to add in our dry ingredients, okay? And we're just about done. And I'm going to add in about two of these serving spoonfuls, heaping spoons at a time. And that's because I do not want a flour shower, okay? If you put in too much flour at one time and turn your mix on one, it's just going to explode in there. So we take it a little slow and we get it a little incorporated. All right, we're going to add in another heaping spoonful and another. All right, and let's get that incorporated. Oh, it's coming together so well. It looks really, really yummy. Now we have just a little bit more in here. And we're going to go ahead and get that into this bowl. We don't want to waste anything. All right. Oh, this is looking so good already. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this up again. I am going to wipe down my sides. Okay, so whenever you get this, whenever you're doing this recipe, make sure that you are uh, wiping, stopping the mixer to incorporate all the stuff that has gathered on the sides, okay? The sides are worth something. <laughs> They're just as good, okay? This is looking really good. Let me show you. I wish I had a better angle and I'm gonna work on getting the equipment that I need to be as successful as I want to be in this. But see how that consistency is? It's a little, it's thick. It's not a little thick, it is thick. You know, but it still has a little run to it. All right, but it's not watery. It's nice and thick. Everything is consistent. Everything is mixed well. Uh, you don't see any clumps or anything, okay? And so you see, we didn't have to over mix it. You don't have to mix it a long time. You don't want to over mix your ingredients or else you're gonna have a really tough cookie, okay? So that's it with that. The last two things you wanna add are your milk chocolate chocolate chips, the most important uh, person or the most important thing in this recipe and so now I'm not a huge huge chocolate fan I think the re original recipe calls for uh, three cups but I only put in one small bag because I don't like too much chocolate I think the three cups for me is overwhelming but if you like them by all means you put in three cups but this is the 11 and a half ounce bag and I will put the entire thing in along with my walnuts. You cannot have chocolate chip cookies without walnuts. If I, even if I'm out at the store and I wanna buy a cookie, if that chocolate chip doesn't have a walnut in it, I won't buy it. And so these are, I buy the half and, it's called halves and pieces. Um, they tend to be bigger. As you see, they're almost like a whole a whole it is somewhat of a whole some of them are a little broken up but they're still much bigger I don't buy the little tiny pieces that doesn't work for my cookies I like my cookies to be nice and hearty like chunky like you know you're eating a chocolate chip cookie with walnuts okay and it just makes the cookie I like the way it makes it look it's just big and gooey you just wait I promise you you just wait so I just take about a handful so I'll be honest I don't have a measurement I don't know I grab about two to three handfuls and I just go for it. whatever it looks whenever it looks good that's when I stop and usually about two to three and I was maybe a half or more so that's about two and a half handfuls for me um, this one is a two cup bag I did add about a half a cup from a previous bag 
so we're going to go ahead and lift this up again now at this point you do not want to over mix all you're making sure to do is to make sure that the chocolate chip cookies and the walnuts are incorporated in the batter you don't want to mix it up too much because you don't want to break up the chips and break up the uh, nuts okay so let's go ahead and do that and guess what we are done yes we are and so i'm going to show you what this looks like again i didn't want to mix it up really uh, too much at the end because i wanted to make sure that i leave my pieces as big as i can and as you see we have a nice nice beautiful cookie dough now you can do so much at this stage um you can freeze these i mean usually that's what i do i like the fact that i can freeze them i roll them up into balls and then i put them on a cookie sheet and i stick it in the freezer for at least an hour um, i think the recipe says overnight but i i've never had a problem with doing it at an hour um so if but if your freezer doesn't freeze that fast you may want to allow a little more time but I use a quarter cup measurement and I dip them out and I roll them into balls and I put them on my cookie sheet. Once they are all frozen, if I don't want to make them all at, this, at the same time, I take the leftover cookie balls and I put them in a freezer bag. And I usually put about six in each bag so when I'm ready to make cookies, I don't have to thaw out the whole batch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead off camera and I'm going to roll these out. And when I get them on a cookie sheet, I'll be back to show you. So I am back. I have rolled out my cookies. I have one more that I can fit on this cookie sheet. And I have my gloves on because the dough is pretty sticky at this point. Okay, unless you really love messy hands, which sometimes is okay. Um, but right now, I'm going to use my gloves, and I have a quarter cup. I scoop it out. I make sure it's nice and even, and then I roll it into a ball, just like that. Very, very simple. And as you can see, this is what, 5, 10, 15 cookies. I have one of my smaller cookie sheets that I'm using, but this is 15 cookies. I have about maybe two, maybe three left for my in my bowl. I'll put those on a separate place, a piece of parchment paper over this one and over the other one. And I'm going to put it in the freezer for at least an hour. Now, I'm telling you, unless you want a cookie bar, one big old cookie bar, don't put these in the oven right now. They're not soft enough. Remember that butter was not solidified. So anytime you make this recipe with melted butter and you put it right into the oven, you're just gonna get one big old flat cookie. So you wanna make sure that you at least get these to a solid state. And I do by putting it in the freezer for at least an hour. So I am back and the cookies are frozen so i've already gone ahead and put six in each of my ziploc bags and i'm going to freeze those tuck those away so when i want to bake them i can just take out just a few at a time um, i do have three that i'm going to go ahead and bake now i don't like to bake too many at one time because unfortunately i will eat them so I'm going to go ahead and bake these three now, and I'll show you what they look like once they come out of the oven and they are cooled. Guess who joined us? It's the sleepy boy, Cameron. Hi. Okay, so Cameron, do you want to do the taste test? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. You've been asking for this for a long time, so I finally did it for you. you. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Mm. It's, it's good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you, Cameron. Yeah. Thank you.